Okay, welcome to this uh, mini course on uh, the Luxfox Pro, Pico Pro, and uh, this is uh, hands-on, so you'll be working with, uh, Luck with the Luxfox. Uh, just to get started, I'll tell you very briefly about uh, myself. I'm uh, Darren Olness. I work as a chemistry professor. I teach chemistry and physics in uh, the Department of Chemistry uh, at Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota. Uh, I've started this uh, YouTube channel, the GNL Project, and it's really based on the fact that uh, I live my professional life based on this quote, this very famous quote by G.N. Lewis. So if you go to any physical chemistry book or most physical chemistry books, you'll probably see this quote, quote referenced. And uh, he said that physical chemistry is everything that's interesting. And I think there's a couple of ways one could read that. One could read that in a kind of a cynical, narrow way, and that is to say that the only thing worth studying is physical is what would be considered physical chemistry. But I read this in a very, very different way. Uh, I read it in a much more open way. And that is, uh, by, by learning physical chemistry, it allows you to uh, take an approach to the world where you can pursue all sorts of interests. And one of the interests for me is certainly computers and um, very interested in trying to understand computers uh, all the way down. So what are the, what's the chemistry uh, and physics going on in the, you know, in a MOSFET all the way up to um, the logic circuits that are used, uh, then um, uh, down to the uh, machine code and the assembly code that's written, uh, and finally um, up into the computer architecture itself. And then um, in, in today's age, uh, you know, the great programs we can run, and in fact, uh, now um, the emergence of some pretty amazing artificial intelligence on these systems. Well, uh, this is going to be focused on uh, microcontrollers, very interested in that as well. I use some in my, you know, uh, research to control some of the stuff in the laboratory, but it's just interesting um, otherwise. And I ran across this um, Luxfox Pico Pro, I guess it's called the Pico Pro, uh, or Max. And I actually bought the Max version. The difference here is this has got uh, 256 meg uh, onboard memory and this is 128. So, uh, but otherwise the way to control them is identical. They are very much like a Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, but a couple of differences. One, they're, uh, and, and this is what we'll be focusing on, they're um, able to run on board uh, Linux, uh, a light version of Ubuntu. So um, we will we'll utilize that. And secondly, yeah, they're really designed, uh, they're trying to hit a niche, I think, in uh, computer vision. So a small, inexpensive uh, com um, way to do um, uh, com computer vision. We're not going to touch on that as much. There are a few videos out on that. Uh, it's interesting that there really isn't much out on uh, YouTube uh, covering this. That's why I thought I would put together um, some of these videos. Now we're going to look at it more for us utilizing its capabilities um, by the fact that it's running um, Linux right there on the system. And that, for me, that's what kind of differentiates it from a Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, you don't need Thony, you don't need to talk to it and then, uh, you know, get it running independently over there or communicate via UART. You can communicate right over the internet um, by an SSH connection, and then you can run the full-blown, you can just code Python right there on the Luxfox. So uh, we're going to try to highlight the things that would be why you would use this, in, you know, uh, instead of just using Raspberry Pi Pico. The Raspberry Pi Pico has such a great, it is a great device. It has uh, such a great um, ecosystem out there. And so you could find pretty much anything you need with that. Much less so here with the Luxfox, but I think it'll kind of take off. Uh, so right now there's just four labs in the playlist, uh, but or at least when I'm recording this, but maybe when you're watching it, there will be more. And I've kind of set this one up to add to it. Usually I try to get a mini course sort of completed before I put it out there, but I think we can, uh, get the basics down and then uh, add to it as we go. So the first lab we're going to talk uh, really about um, setting up the system. So 
um, of course, the light version of Ubuntu will come with a basic pipe, you know, system level Python, but we want to be able to do some cool stuff with it. So we're going to be able, we want to be able to install import packages like NumPy and matplotlib uh, and have it maybe take some data, generate a graph, and then uh, save that graph as a PNG, uh, and we can send it back to our, our machine. We're... Um, so there's and and it's uh, not as easy uh, a, a deal as 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 it might seem. And uh, again, I'm not I'm absolutely no expert at uh, Linux here, so maybe it's a lot easier than it it was for me to set this up. But I thought I would help um, go through what what I did to get it going, and at least it's functional and it works. A couple of cool things then we'll do here that are less you know, less dedicated to an actual science lab, but um, more just kind of interesting and fun. Uh, in the second lab, we're going to, um, you, to actually ser install Flask and, in and run a little Flask script, very simple one, gonna create some fake data. You go to a website that's hosted in your local area network via Flask, you can click on a link and it'll take you to this graph that it made. Then the third lab, we're going to actually get out. So you can open up your uh, you can open up your port 22 on your um, router uh, to the world, but um, I'm you know I, I you know it's probably not a big deal, but I was a little hesitant to do that. So I was trying to think about ways that you can still uh, have the uh, Luckfox just working, doing its thing in your local area network and get some information out uh, that you might be able to access from a remote location. So uh, what this lab will just dump some uh, information out to a Google Sheet. And I'm actually thinking about um, getting this going in my lab. We have to be careful of the temperature uh, uh, which we're doing our experiments over at the college. And uh, our our room is very, very consistent. We take uh, temperatures whenever we're running the experiment. But I might just set this up to have it just every single day um, write the temperature to a Google Sheet, and then I can just look at it from anywhere and make sure and look at it over time, make sure that it really isn't drifting. So I could see some some real life applications for that. And then of course, we've got to blink an LED, so um, we'll make sure that the GPIO pins uh, work. And I had, I, I had a little trouble with this as well, so um, a little bit of information there, I think could get you unstuck if you're a little bit stuck there. All right, so uh, that's the spirit of this uh, mini course. Hopefully, that uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And um, you know, this is stepping uh, definitely beyond my expertise because it's going to rely fairly heavily on um, you know uh, high you know high high understanding of of Linux. So any of you of you out there that um, want to contribute to the comments, that would be very very welcome. All right, well, I'll see you in uh, our first lab.